Um, Lord Glenother, I, I, I know I said before the break that I wasn't going to take you to the leaflet, but, but I think actually we will just look at it briefly to see what the draft leaflet that you were um, uh, approving said. Um, Shomak, it's DHSC 302309 underscore 122, please. Um, and so we can see it, it starts by posing the question, why is a leaflet on AIDS necessary? And the second paragraph under that heading says, since AIDS may be transmitted by transfusion of blood and blood products, the National Blood Transfusion Service wants blood donors to have the facts about the disease. Um, we then see a question, what is AIDS? Uh, and the last sentence of that paragraph explains that AIDS is probably caused by a virus, but this is not known for certain. There's then the question posed, who is at risk from AIDS? a figure given as to the approximate number of patients found to be suffering, um, 1,450 in, in, in the States. And then over the page, there's a, the question posed, has AIDS occurred in the UK? And the, and the draft reads, yes, a few cases have been reported, although nothing like as many as in the USA. No one knows whether more people in the UK will develop AIDS. And then can AIDS be transmitted by transfusion of blood and blood products? Almost certainly yes, but there is the only the remote chance of this. Sorry, there is only the most remote chance of this happening with ordinary blood transfusions given in hospital. However, in the USA, about 12 patients suffering from haemophilia, an illness in which the blood will not clot, have developed AIDS. Haemophiliacs are more susceptible to AIDS because they need regular injections of a product called Factor VIII. This is made from plasma obtained from many donors. Should just one of the donors be suffering from AIDS, then the Factor VIII could transmit the disease. So there's the explanation, as it were, as to why donors are being asked to um, consider whether they should donate blood. How can the risks be reduced? And there's an explanation that there's no test. And so the leaflet then continues, so until there is, and until more is known about this disease, donors are requested not to give blood if they think they may, may either have the disease or be at risk from it. So we can see that the language that, that formulated is, is of a request. Um, will donors be questioned on, on sexual matters when they attend to give blood? Definitely not. The NBTS has a very high regard for donors as extremely responsible people who give blood for the benefit of others and is confident they would not knowingly put patients at risk from such a serious disease. And then the, the question posed and an answer given, where can donors obtain further information on AIDS? So that, that's the, the leaflet that, that you were being asked to approve and which you did approve. Yes. Um, uh, we can see... Um, that Mr. Patton um, also thought the matter required urgent action. That's DHSC 0002309 underscore 027. Um, so the, the date, it's not entirely clear. It may be the first, but it's more likely, I think, the 6th of July, 1983. Uh, that doesn't, I think, matter for present purposes. Um, and it says, Mr. Patton has seen Mr. Parker's submission of the 1st of July and has commented, in my view, public concern on this issue is mounting, and rightly, the earliest possible publication seems desirable, and the Gay Medical Association could take the strain should more fringe-like gay bodies raise the flag of discrimination. Um, uh, and that's copied to Mr. Joyce, so copied yes. to you. So you, you, you'll have seen, um, at the time, Mr. Patton essentially adopting a, effectively the same line as yeah. you. Yes. Um, and then um, I just want to look by way of context to a document that I think you almost certainly wouldn't have seen at the time. It's DHSC 0002321 underscore 024. You'll see, Lord Glenartha, this is a letter of the 14th of July 1983. It's from Dr. Gunson. Um, yeah. So, who was um, a director of the um, uh, Manchester um, uh, Transfusion Service and, uh, as we've established, consultant advisor uh, in, um, to the CMO. And it's addressed to Dr Oliver, so one of those in the medical hierarchy at the Department of Health. And we saw his name come up on a number of documents we looked at with Dr uh, Walford yesterday. Um, uh, uh, and um, it, it would appear from the first paragraph that there'd been a discussion between Dr. Oliver and Dr. Gunson about the leaflet on AIDS, uh, because he says, Dear Ron, following our conversation yesterday about the proposed leaflet on AIDS, 
I thought I would set down some thoughts I had on the matter whilst on my train journey home. I appreciate the Minister's concern, and just pausing there, I think we'll probably see, possibly from other documents or perhaps from Lord Clark's evidence next week, that this is probably a, res a, 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 a re reference to, to Mr Clark, as he then was. I, I suspect it was. Uh, not, not in any event, as far as you're concerned, a reference to you. No. I, appreciate I the didn't have that concern. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the Minister's concern that the issuing of the leaflet may be regarded as a panic measure by the government and lead to resentment amongst donors and alarm amongst patients. I suppose this could be a possible reaction, but on the other hand, it will only require one patient to die with an authenticated diagnosis of AIDS contracted after a blood transfusion for there to be an accusation of the government failing to take measures which have been advocated in the USA and recommended by the Council um, of Europe. Um, uh, and then um, he, he sets out um, two possible lines of action. I'm not, I'm not going to go through the detail of that. Um, uh, and, and over the page, we'll, we'll see from about four lines down, he refers to having spoken to colleagues in other regional transfusion centres about the method of distribution of the leaflet, and I'll, I'll come on to that. But the, the purpose of... Um, showing you this, Lord Glenarthur, really is to reinforce, or Dr Gunson was reinforcing to, to your officials, officials within the department, the urgency of the matter and the possible consequences if action wasn't taken. Precisely. Um, you, you say in your witness statement, um, I think it's paragraph 16.4. Sorry, say again. 16.4, I think. Let me just check. Yes. So if we could go to page 26, please, Shamek. Yeah. You say there in paragraph 16.4, I myself was quite clear that such a leaflet was necessary. I was perhaps not as sensitive as were some of my ministerial colleagues to any concerns about upsetting the homosexual community and the adverse press coverage that could ensue. My greatest concern was to minimise the risk of donors passing on infection. And then you refer to a Home Office minute, which... Um, we'll look at yes. shortly. Um, so is it right to understand, both from the contemporaneous documentation and your statement, you were in no doubt whatsoever, we need this leaflet and it needs to be done quickly? Uh, yes, exactly that. I, I felt that there was a, a degree of urgency which um, uh, we didn't know where we were going with this and we ought to get it out as soon as possible. Um, uh, there the was, however, it would appear... Um, a, a question being raised about the leaflet by Mr Clark, the, the Minister, and, and, and we'll look at that in the context of a meeting that took place on the 6th of July in which you were involved. Mm -hmm. So if we go to DHSC 0001511, this is the note of a meeting... It's dated the 6th of July, 1983. Um, we can see at the top it says MSH, meeting note, subject aids, and we've got the date. And then those present, MSH, now that's the internal abbreviation for the Minister of State for Health. So that's yes. Kenneth Clark, Lord Glen Arthur, so you're there. Mr Parker, Dr Oliver, uh, um, and we've seen those names um, from, from documents with Dr. Wolfwood earlier in the week. So Mr. Parker's in the, I think, the Health Services Division. Dr. Oliver is in um, the, one of the medical divisions. Uh, Mr. Belifo, do, do you recall who that was? I recall the name, but I don't recall him at all. Don't worry. Um, and then we can see the record of the meeting. MSH, so the Minister, Mr. Clark, had two main concerns, to establish the necessity of a leaflet and to agree how the inevitable publicity surrounding it should be handled. Officials felt that ministers did not have the option of doing nothing. The main objective of the leaflet was to discourage those who were most at risk from AIDS from giving blood, and thereby spreading the infection to patients who needed large amounts of blood, principally haemophiliacs. Similar guidance had been issued by the American Blood Transfusion Service, and the Council of Europe had recommended that its member states should put out a warning. Moreover, one of the regional transfusion directors had let slip to the press that a leaflet was in the offing, and if nothing was now done, speculation would be rife. And then paragraph three, MSH, so Mr. Clark, accepted the strength of these arguments. Uh, he thought the leaflet as drafted read well, although he would like it to emphasise more strongly how few cases of AIDS there have been in the UK, perhaps by quoting numbers. 
It should also emphasise unequivocally that donors would not be questioned about sexual matters when giving blood. It was inevitable that the leaflet would attract wide publicity and a carefully drafted press notice and full question and answer briefing would be needed. To minimise the scaremongering, the PN, that's the press notice presumably, should emphasise how relatively few cases of AIDS have been reported and repeat that there was no question of donors being quizzed about their sexual habits. The main objective was to minimise any damage to the transfusion service. The announcement should be made at the same time as the leaflets were released. Lord Glen Arthur would be answering an oral PQ about AIDS from Baroness Dudley on the 14th of July. If she asked about the blood transfusion service, Lord Glen Arthur should emphasise that the risk to haemophiliacs was very small. Um, now, um, first of all, Lord Glen Arthur, have you got any recollection, any particular recollection of this meeting on the 6th of July? Only very vague. I, I, I don't recall the nature of the conversation or the part that I played in it, but I was certainly present at it, and indeed the Minister of Health had strong views uh, which are set out in this paper. I don't remember the detail of the conversation, um, but I do remember being asked to um, be aware of the, uh, the risk being small in relation to... Um, my question, the question I answered in the Lords. And then if we just go back to the, the top of it, appreciating as I, as I do that your, your own independent recollection is, is understandably given the passage of time limited, is it right, however, to understand from what we see written here, which is quite a helpful account, that the meeting would seem to have been called because the Minister of State wanted to have a discussion about this rather than, as it were, sign it off on the papers, as, as, as you and Mr Patton had done. Yes, that's correct. Um, and uh, maybe I, I can pose this question more, more, more directly to, to, to Lord Clark, but um, it, it sounds as though there was a, um, a discussion in which officials felt it important to, as it were, bring Lord Clark on, on side about the need for a leaflet to be published. Yes, I would say that's completely correct, yeah. Um, and then, um, do, do you have any recollection of, of what's being referred to when we talk about one of, it talks about the end of paragraph two, one of the regional transfusion directors having let slip to the press that a leaflet was in the offing? I don't recall anything about that at all. Um, uh, I've obviously read it in the documents that I've been uh, sent, but I, I, I don't recall that particular um, <coughs> quotes, uh, let slip, having happened. I'm afraid it's too long ago. And, and then if we look at the third paragraph, um, th th there's reference there to um, uh, wide publicity. Again, it, would it be right to understand from this that there was a concern, whether on the part of the minister or, or, or officials or both, um, that, that this had the potential for uh, um, adverse publicity in the press and, and therefore needed to be handled carefully? Yes, I think that is absolutely right. Um, things pe picked up quite understandably and rightly by the press, um, could be sensationalist in a way and not express it in quite the same way that those of us handling it all at the centre would have wished to express it. Too much, a lot of shorthand could be used which could generate alarm when um, alarm might not be due. So, uh, and both uh, Mr Clark and to uh, a degree uh, Mr Batten were alive to these risks. And then if we could just look at the last but one sentence in paragraph three, it says the main objective was to minimise any damage to the transfusion service. Now, the main objective of the leaflet, as I un un understand it from what we looked at earlier, was to try and prevent AIDS from entering the domestic blood supply um, with, with the inevitable um, uh, um, uh, appalling consequences that would ensue. C c can you help us, help us understand... Um, why it's being said here that the main objective was to minimise any damage to the transfusion service? I think there are two elements, really, in this, and I'm looking at my, um, my statement. Yes, of course. Um, paragraph 16.5. Um, the leaflet and the press notice had slightly different, but, as I've said, complementary objectives. The leaflet was to discourage high-risk donors because of the risk that that would I I induce the infection into the donations that have been given. 
And the press release was a way of trying to uh, explain this in a way which was sort of user-friendly for the population at large um, and not to provoke an overreaction because if that happened, there was a risk that the um, uh, blood donations might dry up and that would put the um, transfusion service in a degree of difficulty. And so the two tended to balance each other in a way. So that was really, uh, and indeed, as I say, there's, uh, there was a risk that could happen as demonstrated uh, in New York. So, so your reading of this essentially is that when it talks about the main objective being to minimise damage to the transfusion service, that's really talking about how you handle the publicity yes, that, and the adverse fallout. Pre precisely. And, and the leaflet was to encourage people not to give blood if they shouldn't. And, and then if we just look at that last paragraph, um, d d do you know who it was who, who appears to have been advising you or recommending to you that you should emphasise that the risk to haemophiliacs was, and these are my words here, not just small, but very small. Who did that come from? Well, that, that would have been um, Mr. Clark. Um, as far as I can recall, and we can look at the question, I don't think actually the question was asked. I think you're right. Um, um, so I appreciate it didn't arise in terms of what you then said in Parliament, but... D d can you help us understand why um, um, it was thought important that if the issue arose in Parliament, you should emphasise that the risk was very small? Because that was the advice that we were being given by clinicians and by the de departmental officials, that the risk was very small. And uh, I had to go along naturally with that expert advice. Um, now... Um, uh, you were sent a revised draft leaflet. Um, no, actually, sorry, before we come to the revised draft leaflet, let's take this in chronological order. Um, on the 8th of July, there's a document from the Home Office, DHSC 0002229 underscore 072. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's a, a letter from an Anthony Townsend at the Home Office to Mr. Parker in HS1 at the DHSS. Um, and it appears that uh, he's been copied into the note that uh, had been sent to your Principal Secretary, Mr. Joyce. Uh, um, it, it refers to the possibility of, of an argument about there being uh, discrimination um, uh, against homosexuals. Um, and then the last paragraph says, from the Home Office point of view, there's no objection to the publication of the leaflet. Now, now I, know, I don't, don't think there's any evidence to suggest you'd have seen this at the time no, or, or yourself had any discussions with the Home Office. D do you have any understanding as to why the Home Office's views were being sought at all? I don't at this stage, I'm afraid. Um, and then if we go to... Uh, PRSE 5049. Again, th th this is a m minute that you probably would not have seen, I think. Um, it's dated the 6th of July, 1983. Mm -hmm. um, it's from um, Dr. Bell to Dr. Scott. Um, so it's... Uh, um, a, 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 um, Dr. Bell was, I think, effectively performing a similar role to Dr. Wolford, but in the Scottish Home and Health yes. Department. And if I've got that wrong, I hope someone will correct me. Um, if we see at the top AIDS, it says you should be aware of the attached DHSS, and DHSS submission received today. The submission and the proposed leaflet are in line with what's been tentatively agreed by the English and Scottish RTDs, so regional transfusion directors. And then there's identified a... Um, um, uh, an alteration between what had been a draft prepared by Dr. Gunson, which in turn had been based upon a draft prepared by Dr. McLelland, who's a Scottish Regional Transfusion Director, don't need to ask you about that, um, and then the, the National Blood Transfusion Service version. And then in paragraph two, and this is what I wanted to ask you about, it says this, however, we are informed that Mr. Fowler's first reaction is that the term of this leaflet are too strong and that the DHSS may therefore be making 
further amendments. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about a discussion held with, 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 with Dr. Cash, um, a, 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 again, um, um, a, a key figure in relation to, to, to Scotland. And the Mr. Fowler there is presumably a, response, a reference to, to Norman Fowler, to the Secretary of State for Health. Um, do you uh, know anything about his views about the leaflet? I don't recall his views on the leaflet. I think that was being largely handled by Ms. Clark and myself. Um, I uh, don't know to what extent um, the papers were circulated to the Secretary of State's office uh, without referring to the documents. Well, well no doubt, if, if this is a reference to him, um, and if um, it's an accurate one, I can take that up in due course with I, Will Fowler. Yeah. Um, but, but you weren't aware of any expression of opinion by, by Mr Fowler at the time on, on the topic of the leaflet? I wasn't. I don't, I don't recall it being mentioned to me. Uh, the main reaction was from, the, from Mr Clark. Um, so we then go to um, a slightly revised leaflet that, that emerged at the end of July, DHSC 0002327 underscore 117. Um, and if we just go to the second page, we can see, and, and I'm not going to go through it, uh, it's um, similar, not identical to the earlier yes. draft, You've observed in, in your statement that the changes as between the two are relatively modest. I believe so, yes. Um, now, an issue, however, arose, as I think we saw reflected in that letter from Dr Gunston to Dr Oliver, Oliver about the method of distribution of the leaflet, um, how it should be made available to, 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 to donors. Um, and, and we can pick that up. Um, at DHSC 0002321 underscore 026. Now, this is a minute of the 19th of July from Mr. Parker to Dr. Oliver. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't um, look like it would have come to you, um, um, but it does refer no. to... to, to um, the, the meeting, presumably the meeting of the 6th of July, or if not to another meeting, because in paragraph two it says, if my memory serves me correctly, I understood MSH, so Mr Clark, to say at the meeting we had with Lord Glenarthur that he would prefer some consistency of approach in relation to the distribution of the leaflet, but did not want it to be distributed with call-up cards. This was said against the background of the need for a low-key approach to the publication of the leaflet, and the need to ensure that we do not spread unnecessary alarm and despondency amongst donors. Yes. Um, and then there's a reflection about what Dr. Gunson had been putting forward, and, and, and we can see then there's going to be a submission to ministers. Um, so is it right to understand that the, the issue which arose and which is alluded to here was the question of whether when donors were sent the invitation to come and give blood, the leaflet would be provided to them with their call-up cards? So yes before they ever got to the regional transfusion Correct. centre, so that they could take a decision in the privacy of their own home as to yes. whether to go, or whether they turned up to the blood transfusion centre and the leaflet was in some way or other made available to them then. That's correct. <clears throat> Again, could, do you recall um, what, any discussion about that um, or, or what you, your view was at the, uh, at the meeting, presumably the 6th of July meeting on, on that issue? Say that last bit again. Uh, at the meeting that is referred to here, do you recall now the, the discussion about that issue? No, I don't recall that discussion, but I do recall from the papers my reaction to it on paper, which was that uh, I suggested that both methods were used, if I'm correct. Well, uh, we'll, just, we'll just take it through the, in stages. So okay. um, we'll, if we look at Dr Oliver's response, it's at DHSC 000... 2321 underscore 027. So this is the following day. Dr. Oliver says, um, I refer to your minute of the 19th of July. As you say, we'll need to seek ministers' views on how the AIDS leaflet might, might best be distributed. I had recalled Lord Glenarthur's preference for a consistency of approach 
but do not remember his forming any definite view on how this might be done. But reference to a consistency of approach, was that to whatever was done, it was done the same way across all centres? Uh, well, I'm not sure. If you go back to the earlier paper... Yeah, DHSC 302321 underscore 026. Yeah, if we could look at that. Um, <coughs> if my memory serves me correctly, I understand MSH to say the meeting we had with Lord Glenartha that he... Now, who does he refer to? Does it Lord Glenartha or is it MSH? <laughs> Uh, and I think probably the, 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 the uh, consistency of approach element was more related to Kenneth Clark. I, I, I honestly can't remember, I'm afraid, but that seems to have been um, the pattern of these things. Um, uh, 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 but I th yeah, we come, we'll come later to, 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 to my, my yeah, later comments. We will. So if, if we then go back to DHSC 000... Yeah. Thank you, Chamek, you're there already. Um, um, and, and so we then see Dr. Oliver setting out in, in no uncertain terms in the second paragraph, I'm quite sure that the best way is to send out the leaflets with the call-up call up cards so that the contents can be studied by individuals in private. I do not think donors would take exception to receiving a leaflet in this way, couched in the way it is as general information on a subject of public interest. I personally would have thought this would entirely satisfy the low-key approach that ministers and all of us want. And the reference there to low key, is, is it right to understand that that's again about the concern about adverse publicity? Adverse, sensational, sensationalist publicity. I mean, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then Dr. Oliver goes on to explain why the only alternative is to make the leaflet available at donor sessions or positively hand it out at donor sessions. In either event, it could place a donor in an impossibly embarrassing situation or defeat the objective of the leaflet. For example, if having read the leaflet before donation, the donor feels he should decline to give blood, it is embarrassing to walk out, as everyone will suspect the reason for his doing so. If he reads the leaflet or considers it while actually donating blood, again, he can hardly say anything without embarrassment. And if he's in the high-risk group of donors, possibly infected blood will get into the system. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, if people are rejected for donation during a session for quite other reasons, others who see them leaving may assume that they're in the high-risk AIDS group of donors when in fact the reasons may be quite different. All this points in my mind to the benefit of distributing the leaflets with call-up cards so that those who feel any concern can discuss the matter privately with their own doctors or with the transfusion centre without undue embarrassment. Mm -hmm. uh, th those are fairly powerful, pers persuasive points yes. being made by Dr Oliver there, aren't they? Those are powerful points. Um, I, I imagine also, though, and again, it's supposition looking back that far, uh, that there were those who might not have actually seen the information, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the leaflet at home for one reason or another, and that it would have been wise to ensure that either they had seen the leaflet or it was handed to them when they, when they, when they got to the, um, uh, to the point of giving blood. And then for the sake of completeness, I should just see what we see in the last paragraph, I think we'll need to make these points to ministers, but at the same time, we may need to point out that our ability to influence transfusion directors is limited, and many will do what they themselves think is in the best interest of their donors. Yes. At present, the majority, and I read that as referring to the majority of transfusion directors, seem persuaded by the above arguments for notification with the call-up cards. Yes. So, so that's where we are on the 20th of July. Um, if we then... Um, look at DHSC 0002321 underscore 028. Um, th this is Mr. Belitho, um, and, and I've been informed, um, and I can see it, it, it's borne out by this, he's in the information division, so that's the, the reference to ID below his name. Yes. 21st of July, he's writing to Dr. Oliver, at our meeting with MSH and Mr. Clark, he was very keen to keep the leaflet operation very low key. Therefore, I must support John Parker's memory of the meeting when he says that MSH does not want the leaflet to go out with the call up cards. Um, the leaflet's an information leaflet, cannot be seen as a leaflet which you read and then change your mind about giving blood. I'm sure that the only way it should be distributed is by having it available when you give blood. If this is distributed with call-up cards, it will soon be in the news media, and we could have a similar furore to the Gillick case with family planning. I think MSH will be very irritated if we're not able to control distribution the way he wants it. He reacted 
very unfavourably when this was suggested at the meeting. That perhaps bears out your reading of the earlier documents, that this was an issue that was being raised by the Minister rather than you. Yes, I think it does, on reflection. Um, and, and then, if we go to DHSC 302321 underscore 029... We can see Dr. Oliver on the 25th of July responding to Mr. Belitho, um, picking it up halfway through the first line. I'm afraid I cannot accept that the leaflet should not be seen as a leaflet which you read and then change your mind about giving blood. To my mind, this is precisely what it is intended for, although the message has had to be slightly obscured for obvious reasons. Um, I just ask you, again, I, I know you won't have seen this at the time, so it's really for your reflection as someone who was involved in the issue rather than... Um, anything else. W would you agree, first of all, with what Dr Oliver is here saying, that that was precisely what the leaflet was intended for? It was people who would otherwise be giving blood to realise that they shouldn't. Uh, exactly. That is what I believe the purpose of it to be. I mean, I was aware of the sensitivities in both cases, but that's what the purpose was. Um, you know, if, 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 if you were putting people at risk by giving blood, then you shouldn't do it. And do, do, do you know... Um, or, or have any insight as to what's meant when it says, although the message has had to be slightly obscured for obvious reasons? No, I don't, I don't um, uh, know that I can comment on that. Um, uh, I don't know precisely what he means, uh, so I, I don't think I can, I can comment. I never saw the minute. No, you didn't. Um, uh, but then we can see again, just so that we can follow the, the, the story through, um, he says, clearly we must bow to Minister's wishes on the matter of, matter of handling the distribution, um, but although I must accept your and Mr Parker's better recollection of our earlier discussions, I'm not sure that Ministers have fully understood the pros and cons. To this end, therefore, it's essential the points I've raised in my minute to Mr Parker are brought out in this submission so that Ministers can weigh the possible disadvantage of letting risky blood slip through the net against the advantage of minimising any adverse publicity on purely medical grounds, I'm convinced that sending out the leaflet with the call-up card is the only sensible thing to do, and indeed this is the independent advice we've received from our consultant advisor, that's Dr Gunson, whose opinion I respect. So we, we, we've got to now the, the 25th of July 1983. Um, now, conscious, of course, your, your own involvement in this issue began at the beginning of the month, in this particular issue, and you, you had only been in post since the middle of June. We heard from Dr. Wolford yesterday that by the time um, um, she was involved in, in, in the work that produced the submission that was sent to you, she already thought it had taken too long by that stage. Mm. Um, th this appears to indicate a somewhat prolonged debate taking place um, with ministerial involvement in precisely how the matter was going to be distributed. D does it does it concern you looking at this material now that, that that days and weeks were going by whilst these matters were being debated? Um, uh, yes, it does concern me, and I, I think I said that at the time in one of the notes that went from my office to um, other ministers. Yes, it it, it 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 was taking a long time, but there was a lot of drafting and redrafting at official and ministerial level to reflect people's views. Um, which um, concerned me at the time. Uh, I was keen to get on with it. Um, and uh, I don't think I can really add any more. But I began to understand that these things were, were quite difficult and that ministers took a keen interest. Um, yes. And then if, if we'll get to the, the, the ministerial submission then that was uh, um, anticipated in these minutes. Uh, and this is a document that you would have seen. So it's P... Uh, no, wrong reference. DHSC 0002327 underscore 016. Um, so we can see um, it's... Again, it's from Mr Parker, uh, dated the 29th of July. I attach a submission prepared in consultation with colleagues in Med SEB, Information Division and CH Division which seeks Minister's agreement to the printing distribution arrangements and publicity for the proposed AIDS leaflet. Yes. And if we go down the bottom, we can see it CC Mr Joyce. So yes. that's its mechanism for getting to you via your Principal Secretary. Yep. And then if we go to the next page, uh, we can see it says, following the meeting with uh, the Minister and Lord Glenarthur on the 6th of July, 
officials have revised the text of the aid leaflet to incorporate the points made by ministers. And then we can see reference to there being the revised leaflet, a draft statement to be incorporated in the press release, a detailed question and answer brief. And the submission is seeking the, the minister's approval, so Mr Clark's approval for printing and the proposed arrangements for distribution, and his agreement to the text of the statement and the question and answer brief. Was it, was it customary, um, as far as you can recall, to, to seek ministerial approval, even to the detail of the content of a question and answer brief? I, I think it probably was, uh, because if they were going to be used, the minister handling it would want to know that everything that was said w w potentially in the answers was okay. correct. Uh, and then if we pick it up down the bottom half of the page, we've got the heading distribution of leaflet, and then we look towards the bottom, it says the two possible methods of distribution which were considered by regional transfusion directors are discussed below, and then we've got Method one, issue of the leaflet with donor call-up cards, um, expected to reach about 80% of the total donor population. Mm -hmm. And then if we go over the page, various advantages of that are set out. So donors could read the leaflet in their own homes. Is paragraph B, paragraph C. The supposition is that this method of distribution would be the most effective of keeping high-risk donors away from sessions thus removing the temptation to proceed with donation in order to avoid embarrassment. Mm -hmm. um, so th that, that's being identified as an advantageous method. Uh, and then we can see there are, at D, some administrative and, and resource implications. W would you agree that, that those are fairly minor administrative and resource implications there identified? I believe that, that that to be the case, yes. And then we can see that the second option is for the leaflet to be made available at donor sessions and, and a number of disadvantages set out at, at E, F and G. Difficult to ensure all donors received a leaflet could be insufficient time for it to be read prior to donation. F, there are many other circumstances beside the risk of age which lead to a donor being rejected for donation on a particular occasion. Donors could be caused embarrassment if they felt their fellow donors had wrongly suspected the reason for their rejection. Um, and G, if a donor in a high-risk group were to read the leaflet immediately prior to or during donation, he might well be tempted to proceed with the donation rather than to risk the embarrassment of withdrawing at that stage. So would you agree those are all, as it were, um, um, negatives to that, disadvantages of that proposed method that, of distribution, mm -hmm. uh, or, or, although it's then recorded at H that there's very few administrative problems and no, resource, no obvious resource implications? Yes. Okay, and then if we go to the top of the next page... Um, we can see then what was being um, um, suggested to ministers. Although it would be possible to achieve a near uniformity of method of distribution amongst directors, it is not immediately obvious which method is to be preferred. But just pausing there, if one l leaves aside the, the administrative and resource implications, which appear to be fairly modest, um, it, it, there's a list of advantages to method one and disadvantages to method two. Was it not pretty obvious that in, in terms of the objective of preventing AIDS entering the domestic blood supply, distribution method one was, was the, 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 the more appropriate? Well, it appears that that's the case looking at this 38 years later. I, um, I can't remember what the dialogue would have been about it, but the, 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 there were also advantages in the other method, although they are... They're not dismissed, but they are put down as negative points here. Um, and, and then there's then reference to the, what might be the differing perspectives of regional transfusion directors. So it said it was evident that directors' opinions were influenced by what they saw as being most appropriate yeah. in their regions, bearing in mind the different population characteristics, including the numbers of and attitudes to homosexuals. As directors are responsible under the Medicines Act for the safety of the blood which they issue, due weight must, of course, be given to their clinical decisions in this matter. Uh, and then there's reference to resource uh, implications. And so the recommendation is in the next paragraph, paragraph five, officials would recommend, therefore, that RTDs, regional transfusion directors, yeah. should be given the discretion to decide for a trial six-month period the most effective means of distribution in their own regions. Officials will be able to obtain regular feedback information from directors during this trial period. So the recommendation ultimately is leave it to directors' discretion. Yes, it was. Um, uh, and then it goes on to talk about um, um, how publicity could be handled. Um, 
uh, and um, whether there should be an early public statement and, and so on. And, and I'm not I'm not going to to, to, to um, read through that. So we can see that's the submission um, that went to to you and to to, to Mr. Clark, um, and indeed to Mr. Patton. So if I can then just invite your attention to the responses, starting most importantly with your own. DHSC 0002327 underscore 120. Uh, so this is your, um, well, it's a, it's a minute from Mr. Joyce, your principal secretary to Mr. Parker, 3rd of August 1983. Um, but it, it, it sets out your response. So one, he approves the text of the leaflet and statement. Yeah. Yeah. Two, He's asked if we have a publication date in view. Was there a particular reason why you, you wanted to know what the publication date was going to be? I didn't know when it was going to be, so I simply asked the question. But w were you essentially anxious to try and ensure, bearing in mind that there'd already been a de degree of not insignificant yes, delay? I, 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 you know, I didn't want to see on. that it was being further delayed. Um, you asked a query about whether you or Mr Clark should deal with TV yeah. or radio interest. And then on the substance, you say this. He favours using both methods of distribution and feels that the risk of embarrassment to potential donors is outweighed by the need to achieve wide distribution. Is it, is it right to understand, then, that what you thought the best thing to do would be, um, although you were content for it to be left to regional transfusion directors' discretion, you were saying here, actually, the ideal would be to do both, so that it goes out with the call-out cards, but is also then available in the centres? Yes, that was my, my view, based on the papers that I had seen and the discussions we'd held. And then we can see that there's a, 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 what's put in, in speech marks, so presumably a, a, a verbatim account of what you'd said. We may be at the tip of an iceberg with AIDS and find ourselves in trouble in 18 months' time unless we are really positive in our approach, even if it does embarrass a few gay people. Um, I just want to ask you about... Two, two parts of that. The, the, the first, the, the reference to being really positive in our approach. What, what, what did you have in mind with that? Proactive, perhaps more than positive, um, uh, reflecting on the words that I used all that, those years ago. Yes, let's get on with it and do something, but it, it, it's no good. Um, we were putting ourselves, in my view, in a degree of peril if we didn't get a move on with it and alert people to the risks that might be there. So that's why I said, be positive. Uh, uh, I don't think I can add to that. Uh, and then the reference to tip of an iceberg with AIDS. Now, you, you've said in your statement that you think you were talking about AIDS in general. I think that's at paragraph 20.4 of your statement. 20.4, yeah. Yes. Yes, you say my comment about being at the tip of an iceberg was, I think, about AIDS generally, not specifically about blood products. Yes. I just want to um, test with you whether you, you, you are still are of that view. You didn't have responsibility for AIDS generally. You had responsibility for blood, blood products, blood safety. And this memo is being written, or this minute's being written, specifically in relation to a policy designed to secure the safety of, of, of the blood. Was it not possible that you were actually referring specifically to the fact that you might be at the tip of an iceberg in terms of infection with AIDS through blood on blood products rather than AIDS generally? I can't recall precisely um, what my thought process was at the time, but there was growing public concern about AIDS. There was publicity about it. And uh, we didn't seem to know at that stage what was going to happen if we did nothing to try and prevent uh, contaminated blood uh, being uh, delivered uh, in the United Kingdom. So I think it was AIDS in general that I was concerned about because we still didn't know very much. Um, and I suppose I might also have connected it with the blood products issue, but I, I, this was just a handwritten note at the top of a piece of paper that I was subsequently typed up and sent round. 
Uh, and then if we look at Mr Patton's response... Just, just a moment. I, I think what, what you're articulating is this, I said, that um, the question of blood products was part of a, a general potential problem with AIDS, and that if AIDS was, if you were at, at the tip of an iceberg, that is, what you were seeing was only a very small portion of what was there ultimately to be seen. It, that would apply across the board, including blood products. Yes, I think it would, Sir Brown. So what you're saying applies to blood products, it applies to AIDS generally? I, I, I suspect that is correct, yes, but I can't reflect more closely than that at this distance. Um, uh, so if we look then at, at Mr Patton's response, DHSC 0002327 underscore 118. Um, th this is the 2nd of August, uh, and the reference to PSH there is to Mr. Patton, um, as I understand it, um, has seen Mr. Parker's submission and has commented, one, I think that printing and distribution arrangements should go ahead as soon as possible underlined. So again, Mr. Patton emphasising the urgency. Yes with low-key publicity is, is suggested. Two, we need to do something and for it to be known that we have done something in case the worst does happen, can it be done by end August? And then three, and, and again, this seems to be consistent with your own views, mm. is there any reason why directors could not follow both methods of distribution for the trial period? A anything there that you disagree with? No, I agreed with that entirely. I think we just expressed it in different ways. Um, now, ju just for the sake of completeness, although um, these will be more questions for, for Mr. Clark, Lord Clark, than for you, um, we can see at DHSC 00023271 underscore 119... There's a a response on behalf of Mr. Clark, 2nd of August 1983, um, where he says, a lot of work's obviously gone into this, I'm content with it. I'm even prepared to allow directors discretion on how to distribute for six months as the arguments are finally balanced. Presumably we'll then think again in light of the experience. I hope this does not become a silly season story. Handle it in the DHSS through press office. Regional directors should not handle queries themselves. Go ahead with the leaflet that is drafted in the press notice. Um, so, uh, as I say, I can... Uh, for the most part, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Lord Clark about this. But, but what appears from the first paragraph at, at this point in time is there's a proposal that, that, that's reflecting the submission. There'll be a six-month trial period. Yes. During which it'll be left to director's discretion as to which mode or, both, whether, or whether they adopt both modes of distribution. But it won't be imposed by the Department of Health. That was, that's my understanding. Um, uh, and then... Um, can, can, can I just be clear about the, the dates and the sequencing of this? This is uh, a response dated the 2nd of August. Um, it doesn't, therefore, we, d we don't know from his text whether he had already received uh, the response or any copy of the response uh, made by, by Mr. Patton. Uh, and uh, the response of Lord Glen Arthur uh, was yet to come. Yes. So this could have been the first of three could, documents. Yes, we, we don't know the precise. So I, I, I've simply mentioned that in case those people were following it, will, as it were, follow the story chronologically, which it isn't necessarily. And indeed, the last two responses are before uh, you um, made yes. the points you made in, in your memo. That's correct. Yes, I, I, mean, I, I'd essentially understood this, but please correct me if this is wrong, Lord Glenarth, or if you disagree, as being... Each of the ministers is effectively responding uh, roughly around the same time, independently, n not at this point in time commenting upon each other's or following any particular sequence, but that all of you have looked at it and you're, through your principal secretaries, then feeding back to Mr Parker your initial thoughts. Yes, I think that's right. I mean, it would have appeared in our, probably in our boxes to do late at night or even or, or whenever the, the opportunity arose to deal with it. And um, uh, we'd have probably been all, we, the three of us would be looking at all at different different dates. I mean, I simply can't remember the, uh, I haven't got a chronology written out here. Um, uh, uh, and then um, uh, the, uh, there's a 
minute then, um, which again is going to be more for, 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 for Lord Clark, but which I think just helps then perhaps explain what happens towards the end of August. It's DHSC 302309 underscore 034. This is the 26th of August, 1983, and it's from Mr. Clark's private office. Mm -hmm. We can see it's copied to, to, to your office because the CC, Mr. Joyce, um, and it's from, so from Mr. Naismith to Mr. Winstanley, we spoke MSH, so Mr. Clark has now seen the Q&A briefing and press statement prepared together with information provided by ID, Information Department, Department, yeah. Department on the rather alarmist press coverage the subject has so far attracted and has commented. The publicity is annoying partly because it's what I feared and what we do not want. Docs ban gays, blood, etc. I'm concerned by the report that similar alarmist action caused a shortage of blood in New York. The range of views from directors is also alarming. Have we agreed on one method of using the leaflet? There could well be a fuss and a scare if different steps are taken in different parts of the country. What authority do I have to insist on one national method and what are the options? Now, not necessarily easy to reconcile that with the earlier minute, but as I say, that's for Lord Clark, not, not for you. Yep. But, but what we can see is this issue is raised on the 26th of August. And then there appears to have been a meeting involving you and Lord Clark um, on um, the, the 30th of August, although I think you've got some doubt about whether that can be right. But let's just look at the documents first of all. DHSC 0002309 underscore 035. Thirty first of August, nineteen eighty three. Um, th this is from again. Um, I think Mr. Clark's private office um, to um, to Mr. G is that Gagan? Gagan, yes, Scott Gagan. And, and was he in your private office? Yes, he was. He was my assistant private secretary. And it says, following yesterday's meeting between MSH, that's Mr. Clark, and PSL. Now that's an abbreviation that Me. refers to you. I agreed to check the latest position on the distribution of leaflets with officials. Um, and then there's a discussion about or, or a reference to the fact that printing and distribution is being completed and transfusion directors are waiting the go ahead. Um, uh, and, um, and then <coughs> there's a reference to the, Mr. Clark's earlier minute of the 2nd of August. Um, uh, paragraph three tells us he's been reviewing his earlier decision and in light of the information supplied by Mr. Wan, Mr. Wynne Stanley has confirmed he's content to allow the distribution to proceed on the basis outlined above subject to any last-minute views which Lord Glenarthur may have. Um, so, uh, um, some discussion appears to have taken place in any event between you and Mr. Clark. You, I think, slightly doubtful about whether there can have been a meeting, because looking at your personal diary, you... I was in Scotland, and I know what I was doing, and it's in the diary. Um, I didn't have it to hand yet. But I think we've got it um, on, on the screen. We do, and we don't. But, but I do not recall that meeting, um, and uh, I was in Scotland at the time and came down a couple of days later. I even got the, the time of the flight that I came down on. So uh, whether it was a telephone call or anything like that, I yeah. simply do not know. I'm afraid. I, I was going to ask whether, in fact, it's possible it could have been a telephone it, meeting. It it could have been, but I have no recollection of it at all. Um, but but. In any event, what we then get to, DHSC 0002309 underscore 036. Um, is uh, uh, a minute on your behalf dated the 1st of September 1983, in which you put forward a proposal for a trial period of three months instead of six months. Uh, and then you say, you. Uh, or it said on your behalf in the second paragraph, you'd like copies of the director's responses and copies of the briefing you've requested from Miss Edwards when this arrives. I'm, I'm not sure what the reference to the briefing from Miss Edwards refers to, but I, I don't think we need to worry about that. Again, I'm going to paraphrase, and then perhaps you can tell me if I've got this wrong. Um, there was this proposal for six months in which regional transfusion directors would each decide what they wanted to do. Um, you're suggesting that that should be brought down to three months so that um, 
uh, with the reports from directors as to what they're actually doing so that an earlier decision could be taken as to whether there should be then, as it were, a, a department-imposed method of single distribution. Is that right? Yes, broadly speaking, that is right. It did seem to me that a six-month trial was unnecessarily long, and we had to go firm on how we were going to distribute these leaflets. Um, and uh, six months was excessive, in my view. I was used to dealing with stuff much more rapidly than that, and it seemed a, an unconscionably, whatever the word is, long period of time. Um, but and it was accepted, I think. And then I think there is, uh, well, we've got the final leaflet, um, uh, BPLL 0007247. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to go through the detail of it, no. but it, it's um, it, it, it's not radically different from no. the version you'd first been asked to look at at the beginning of July, is it? No, it's not radically. There are a few small changes. Um, and then just so that we can um, pr put a, a date on the, the, the eventual availability of the leaflet, it's DHSC 0006401 underscore 006. Uh, so this is the press release dated the 1st of September 1983. The Department of Health and Social Security has today published the leaflet AIDS and how it concerns blood donors. It's been produced in cooperation with the regional blood transfusion directors. Announcing publication, Kenneth Clark, Minister for Health said, it's been suggested that AIDS may be transmitted in blood or blood products. There is no conclusive proof that this is so. Nevertheless, I can well appreciate the concern that this suggestion may cause. We must continue to minimize any possible risk of transmission of the disease by blood donation, but it's not possible to test a person's blood for the presence of AIDS. The best measure which can be taken at the present time is to ask people who think they may have AIDS or be at risk from it to refrain from giving blood. This is what this leaflet sets out to do. So we can see from this, it's on the 1st of September that the leaflet then becomes available for distribution in the regional transfusion centres yes. in accordance with the director's discretion. Yes. Um, uh, and um, I think it's probably obvious from both your statement and what you've already said, but... Bearing in mind, we, we, we know from Dr. Wolford's evidence that work on this issue would certainly have been taking place in May. It has taken an unconscionably long time to get to the 1st of September and the distribution of the leaflet, hasn't it? That is my uh, understanding, yes. I, I, I was concerned that it was all taking too long, but, and I think probably Dr. Wolford felt the same. Um, now... When, when um, we looked, I think, at one of the earlier documents, the, the, the question came up about the possibility of, in addition to a leaflet, donors being questioned mm. at the regional transfusion centres. And that isn't a route that has been gone down by the department at, 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 at this stage. C can you recall any, any particular discussions or consideration that was given to, to that issue? during this period, this, this late spring, summer of 1983? No, I can't recall any discussion on the issue. Um, a lot of the um, views on that sort of thing were expressed in some of the earlier papers we looked at. Yes, and we, and we saw that the, the regional transfusion directors were, they certainly were adamant that they weren't going to, to ask people about sexual no, practices. No, no, I was great concern about that. Um, the, there's then a question of whether they sh should ask questions about whether people are experiencing... Exactly symptoms that could be consistent with AIDS, but it doesn't appear the department got involved with that at this point in time, or, or that you got involved with it. I, I, I wasn't involved in it, no. Um, uh, uh, just pausing there, do you, do you think it would have been a good idea for there to be, um, at the very least, encouragement of, of, of questioning, not necessarily about sexual practices, but about the, the donor's health with a view to ascertaining if they were exhibiting what symptoms consistent with an early AIDS state? I, I, I don't think out of context looking at it so long ago um, that I could 
say whether or not it was a good or a bad idea. I think that is, uh, is too difficult to judge because the context is, um, in, in 2021, wholly different from what was there in 1983. So I, I honestly don't know. Um, so that's 1st of September 83, and, and, and your proposal for a three-month trial yes. period, as you understand it, had been accepted. Mm -hmm. And so the, the matter should then, if we, that takes us through September, October, November, should really have been being reviewed in, in, in December of 1983. Yes. So I want to pick up the, the, the narrative of what then happened. Okay. Um, if we look at... WITN 5282011. Yeah, WITN We can see this is a minute dated the 23rd of November 1983, and it's copied to your private office because it's CC Mr. Joyce, um, and it's from Mr. Clark's private office to Mr. Wynne Stanley. Um, it, it, it refers to a submission of the 20th of October, and my understanding from your statement is that that's one of the submissions that hasn't been located. So we don't, we don't have that particular Which submission. paragraph number oh, was, that, was that, that relation to? That, that's a good question. I'm afraid I haven't noted down. Um, um, but I can... Let me just double check. Uh, paragraph 43.2, okay. page 58 of your statement. Uh, if, if you put that up on screen, show me. So the statement again is WITN 5282001. Paragraph, so page 58. Yes. Uh, Subparagraph. Subparagraph 43.2. For the room. So you, you say in the paragraph 43.1, as set out above, the first AIDS leaflet for blood donors was published on the 1st of September 1983. Uh, in early September 1983, I'd suggested a trial period of three months, and that's the document we looked at a few moments ago. From the papers which have now been supplied to me, it seems that this was the approach adopted. And then you say this, I cannot remember being provided with any further information from civil servants about the way it was distributed after its publication, although I see that my office was copied into the response from the Minister for Health, Mr. Clark, to a submission dated 20th of October 1983. A copy of the submission does not seem to be available but it appears from Mr. Clark's response that it suggested distribu distributing the leaflets in STD clinics, a suggestion that was approved by Mr. Clark. So yes. we, we don't have that submission. No. Um, um, and so you've, you've tried to piece together from the response what it, yep. what it might have been about. Um, now, there are various documents, none of which I think you saw at the time, um, which provide information about what it was regional transfusion directors were, as a matter of fact, doing. Yes. I'm not going to trouble you with those. You explain in your statement that, the, that your lawyers, the government legal department team, have put together um, a narrative note of what, from the documents yes. of what they think might have happened. I'm not going to take you through that because you, you've said in your statement you can't speak to the accuracy of its contents. Um, um, and much of it concerns material you never saw at the time. So I should say, and for the benefit of those listening, that note, we're very grateful to the government legal department for putting it together, but yeah. we will, of course, within the inquiry team, be uh, verifying for ourselves if it is an accurate and comprehensive note. We've, it, it refers to documentation which the inquiry has, so, so we will be doing that exercise. So I want to pick things up shortly before the matter came back to your attention and, and then look at the documents you yes. received. Just sticking with your statement, you say in paragraph 43.3, I cannot recollect any further submission on the leaflet being provided until the 17th of April 1984. So we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. Um, before we do that, um, uh, there's um, just, I think, one document that will help put, put that submission in context. 
So DHSC 0002239 underscore 015. So a minute of the 14th of February 1984, it's from um, Alison Smithers, and, and we know she was uh, Dr. Wolford's successor. Yes. Um, because Dr. Wolford had moved to a different post in December 83, and it's addressed to, to, to Mr. Williams' aid leaflet. We briefly discussed the need for the current aid leaflet, which is distributed by regional transfusion centres to potential donors. In view of the published evidence of transmissibility of AIDS by <coughs> blood transfusion, our current advice to donors could seem too lax. It may also be necessary to take up with the transfusion directors the need for more positive distribution rather than the negative approach that some of the centres have used. I would be grateful for an indication of how soon a reprint of the leaflet will be required. If this is fairly soon, I should be discussing the redraft with Dr Gunson and the RTDs, Regional Transfusion Directors, if, however, there are many more leaflets still available, we may need to consider whether we should substitute the redraft before they're used up. Mm -hmm. So just looking at the first paragraph, and again, th this didn't come to you. No, you, you. You pick up the picture in April with a ministerial submission. But there are two issues or concerns being raised here by Dr Smithers, are there not? The first is the content of the leaflet. Does it need to be made stronger? Yep. Is, it, is it, as she says, they're too lax? And secondly, the distribution method, a concern expressed that it's not being distributed in the way that it should. Precisely. And it's right to note, we, I, and I, I'm not going to go into what the reasons might have been with you because you, you, you weren't privy to what was going on in the background, but um, this is rather later than the three-month trial period that you'd envisaged, isn't it? Uh, the date is... This is fe we're now in the middle of February 1984. Yeah, well, that's quite a lot later, yes. Um, so let, let's then look um, at the, the submission that was sent in April of 1984 to you, um, which I think is, is the first evidence we have of, of, of you being asked to consider this, yeah. th this matter again. It's at DHSC 0002321 underscore 044. Um, uh, um, uh, it's a, a minute, the 17th of April, 1984. Again, we can see it's copied to um, Mr. Joyce. Um, the, the, the topic is not, in fact, directly the leaflet at all. Um, uh, and we can see the heading on the Minute Medical Research Council Working Party on AIDS press conference. Um, and please see Mr. Cunningham's minute attached. And then if we go over the page... There's a minute from Mr. Cunningham, dated the 17th of April, 1984. Again, it's copied to you. So if we go to the second page, or copy to your, your office. We can see there, CC Mr. Joyce. If we go back to the previous page. Um, I'm not going to go through most of it, because, it, it, as I say, it's talking about matters such as the Medical Research Council Working Party. But if we go to the bottom of the page... We can see paragraph four under the heading publicity, blood donors. Ministers agreed last year that a leaflet should be issued to blood donors about the dangers of those at risk of contracting AIDS giving blood. There's been a six months trial of this leaflet, which has been successful. The leaflet and method of distributing it are under review. Now, it's not quite clear whether the six months is because your message about three months hadn't got through to the author of this or whether that's just reflecting that six months or more has now passed. I don't think you can probably answer that. I don't think I can answer that, but, but one um, thing does strike me with this, and that is, if we go back to the top, um, I think this... Uh, I, Miss McKessick was, was um, John Patton's private secretary, um, and I can't recall from this why um, John Patton was dealing with it and not me in this particular case. Yes, and it looks from paragraph one as though there was um, a, an issue of media coverage. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know whether that explains why Mr. Patton, um, uh, uh, Mr. Patton's private office is being directly addressed. But in any event, we can see it, it's taken until the 17th of April before the issue of a leaflet comes back, albeit slightly obliquely, yes. before you. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, 
uh, if we um, go to uh, well um, uh, I should say just just to complete it go to the second page sorry show me go to the next page there's an issue raised in paragraph five this about a different leaflet um, but a, a leaflet possibly by the Health Education Council, this is the last sentence of that paragraph, Lord Glenarthur, um, as part of a programme of updating publicity material on sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. So the, there's a proposal for, as it were, reinforcing the message, yes. but through a different means, yep. um, a, a warning the of the dangers of, of, of um, what, what's their term, promiscuous um, homosexual activity. And then if we look at... DHSC 0002309 underscore 040. We can see um, the message on behalf of Mr. Patton on 18th of April, um, uh, again, CC to your private office, um, is um, PSH, so Mr. Patton, a senior yep. minute of the 17th of April, and has commented. Any leaflets on prevention by the HEC, that's the Health Education Council, as described in paragraph five, must be handled very sensitively. I think that MSH, Mr. Clark, should be aware of this. I'm doubtful. And then we look at your response. This is where we come back to the issue of the, the blood transfusion service leaflet. It's at DHSC 0002309 underscore 041. the 25th of April 1984 it's from Mr Joyce your principal secretary and it says this Lord Glenarthur senior minute of the 17th of April covering Mr Cunningham's submission he takes a somewhat different view to Mr Patton mm -hmm. in that he favours a further leaflet directed particularly at promiscuous gays Lord Glenarthur's view is based on the fact that there have been criticisms though not widespread from correspondents and others that the department has not done sufficient to increase relevant public awareness he therefore appeals that, feels that we should pursue a sensible, non-alarmist course of increased public education. And then before we look at the next paragraph, Lord Glenarthur, that, that presumably is an accurate reflection of your, of your view at the time. I'm certain it was, yes. You, you, you were keen on there being as much public awareness as could be. Yes, because I did not want to discover or any of us wanted to discover that, that there was infected material getting into the UK uh, uh, blood donation system. And then we can see in the uh, last paragraph, uh, you say uh, he would like, or, or so Mr Joyce says on your behalf, he would like a fuller note on the successful NBTS leaflet trial referred to at paragraph yeah. four of Mr Cunningham's submission. So you... You're, you actually asked back in September, I think, to be kept updated, and it does, doesn't appear that it happened. But in any event, you're asking here to be told what the outcome of the trial has been. Is exactly, that yes. Um, I think that's probably the right point to break, sir, and then we'll, we'll look after lunch at, at, at one, what then happened in, in terms of the material. Yes, well, very well. Well, we'll take a, a, break, uh, a break now until, until 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. <laughs>